Hello everyone, this is Dr. Orkin Bajek and in this video we are going to talk about reliability. So let's talk about what reliability is first. So reliability can be defined as a measure that represents the probability that a product will perform its intended function within a specific period of time under normal conditions of use. So what this really means is, let's say that we have a product and we know that its reliability is 95%. So what this really means for us is that this 95% represents that with 95% probability, this product will operate within its lifetime, okay? We can talk about uh, two different cases. When when we have a system that is composed of multiple components or parts, the system operates only if all components of the system function. In the second case, consider that we have a system with multiple components and some of these components, maybe one or more of these components are backup components in case one of these components do not, does not function, okay? So uh, let's say that you have a car, right? So in, in this case, if, a, if the brake uh, stops working, then this, this is going to be a serious problem. So for, for, for systems like this, maybe a backup could increase the reliability. Uh, so we are going to see how we can calculate reliability for various scenarios. So let's say that we have this system that is composed of three components. For the system to function, the entire system to function, all components must be functioning. So all three must be working. The probability of functioning for these components are 92%, 88%, and 93%. What is the probability that the entire system will function as intended? So this is the first case that we, we saw earlier, right? This, this first case that all components must be functioning for system to function. Now, in this case, what we understand is the entire system will fail if one of these components fails, okay? Now, to be able to visualize our system that we are working on, I proactively uh, drew this, this graph or this visual. And so what we are seeing is that these three components are connected in series. Okay, so you have the first part, the second one, and the third one with reliabilities in it. So for, for the entire system to function, all of these need to function. And so we are going to use the product of these individual reliabilities or probabilities. Remember, if we go back to our first slide, reliability is the probability of functioning within a time period, right? So, so each of these represents a probability. The, the first function, the, the first component has a probability of 92% of operating when activated. And the second one has a probability of 88% and so on. So since these three are essentially independent in the sense that if I, if I turn on the first one, and then if I turn on the second one, they don't really impact each other in terms of functioning, right? So if let's say the first one fails, it has nothing to do with component two, right? Component two doesn't cause the, the first component to fail. So that, that's, that's what I mean by these components are independent, okay? But obviously for the overall system to operate, the system depends on these, these components. So this is essentially coming from the, the probability of independent events. So we multiplied the individual probabilities and we are seeing that the overall reliability of our system is about 
percent. Now, I want to ask you a question and I want you to think about it in that if you have more components in series like this, so imagine that you have component four, component five, component, component six, and so on. How does this really affect the overall system reliability, right? Think about it. Remember that you will, in, in such a setting, you will keep multiplying these, these probabilities, these individual reliability values. So what we can say that is, is that as you have more components um, in series like this, you will have a lower system reliability overall. Okay, so you can you can experiment this on your own and see uh, how this changes. All right, now let's look at the second case, right? So that one is that you have a system that includes multiple components and it is sufficient that one of them is functioning for the entire system to function and the other components are for backup, right? If, if this first component doesn't function when activated, then, then the second component or the third component could come in and start functioning and you're still, uh, the, the overall system is still functioning. So this could be viewed um, as a comparison like this. So let's say the first case, right? So for the first case in which all of the components needs to function for the system to option, you might consider a grocery store. So you have to have sufficient lighting in the store and all of your lamps need to be functioning to have that sufficient lighting. Well, let's say that you have, you, you are in your office and you have two lamps, but only one of them will provide sufficient lighting. So in that case, we are talking about the second case, right? Even if one of them doesn't work, you still have sufficient lighting in, in this scenario. So let's look at a numerical example and see how we can work on a case like this. So again, we have our system that is composed of three components. For the system to function, in this case, only one of the components needs to function. So the probabilities are 0.92 for component one, 0.88 and 0.93. So I proactively uh, provided the, the visual for my system. So in this case, I have a parallel setting. And here we are going to calculate the probability that the entire system will function as intended. So again, the difference between this example and the previous example is here, it is sufficient for one of these to function so that our entire system functions. But the first example, entire system depends on all of the components functioning. So to be able to calculate the, the reliability for parallel systems, we can use the probability that all of these components will fail. And then we can subtract it from one to obtain the probability that at least one of them will function, right? So let's calculate the probability that all of these will fail. So the probability that the first component will fail is one minus 0.92. Remember, reliability 0.92 represents the probability that this component will function. So if I subtract it from one, I have the probability that component one will fail. And the probability that component two will fail, again, we did one minus 0.88. And as you noticed, I said, and, and therefore I put a multiplication between these two. And then similarly, we will do one minus 0.93, which represents the probability that component three fails. And the result of this function or calculation will give us the probability that all of these three components fail, okay? So again, just to just recap, the first component of the product is the probability that component one fails and then component two fails and component three fails. So this is the probability that all three components fail. 
Now, if I've subtracted from one, that will give me the probability that at least one of them is functioning, okay? So that will be 0.999, okay? So this would be a, a way to calculate the reliability of parallel systems in which you have backup components. And then your approach would be to calculate the probability that all of the components will fail, and then you would subtract it from one. So in this video, we talked about reliability and how we can calculate reliability if we have a system that depends on all components to function. And another case was that we have a system in which we have backup components. And even if our first component fails, the other components can come in and still the system will function. And we, we looked at how we can calculate the reliability for these settings. So I hope that this video will be helpful to you and I will see you in the next one.